Disney presents From Frontierland, El Fago Baca, Attorney at Law. El Fago, come back here! You stay out of this! A young law student today has university professors who are specialists in each of the many branches of law. He has free use of the school's vast law libraries, some of them with 80 to 100,000 volumes. But back in the 80s, when El Fago Baca was reading for the law in an attorney's office in Old Santa Fe, these were about all the law books that were available to him. However, El Fago Baca had personal qualities that made him a good lawyer. He had a sympathetic understanding of the pioneer people who were his clients. And his broad experience as sheriff gave him an intimate knowledge of the unique problems of this raw, restless territory. El Fago was wise and El Fago was strong. El Fago, El Gato, who made right from wrong. And the legend was that like El Gato the cat, nine lives at El Fago Baca. It was the growing need for attorneys and courts of law to dispense justice in the old Southwest that prompted El Fago Baca to put aside his guns and study for the bar. Ha ha, the pistolas, <laughs> where are they? <laughs> I'm told the time of the gun has passed now, Padre, at least for me. I'm now a lawyer. He dared to stand up to the toughest of men. He faced all their six guns again and again. And the legend was that, like El Gato the cat, nine lives at El Fago, El Gato. If a successful attorney can be defined as one who wins his cases without taking his clients to court, then you, Mr. Baca, Ah, uh, well on your way. <laughs> Actually, he was to become a very successful lawyer. An important figure in New Mexico when it was admitted to the Union. He was even admitted to practice before the Supreme Court in Washington. But his success is hard to understand. For El Fago was a sentimental man who often allowed his heart rather than his head to guide him. As we are about to see in this newest adventure, of our true hero of the West, titled El Fago Baca, Attorney at Law. Get out of here. Did you plug him? That's right. Used to ride with the Brunel gang around Zakura before you broke him up, didn't he? Yes. Whoa. What's 
going on? Bank robbery, Ben. You'd better see to your wife. I think she was at the bank when it happened. You met my new deputy, Joe Monroe. Joe, this is Mr. Baca and Mr. Newman. How do you do? I was on my way to the office when I heard the shots. Yeah, they stuck up the bank. Baca knocked this one over. Better question the bank, folks. Just about to. We better go see about the buggy. Miss Simmons, do you happen to recognize any of the men who robbed the bank? Not exactly, Sheriff, but one man did have a, a patch over his eye. The others were all masked. Did you notice how tall he was? Well, no. Uh, well, yes, he was about medium height, I would say. I, I really couldn't tell. I was so scared. I, I've never been so frightened. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Oh, how much, Mr. Gettleman? Oh, that's quite all right, Mr. Baca. I'll display it in the window. A very special gun now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Excuse us, please. The pin is broken from the axle. I don't think you'd better write it now. You better take some men and go out and pick him up. We'll meet in front of the office. Hurry it up. What's up, Sam? Miss Simmons just identified one of the robbers as Bernal. I'm sending Monroe out of the posse to pick him up. Monroe? Name sounds familiar. That's the man I got paroled last year. Oh, yes, El Tuerto. One-eyed bank robber. I don't understand. It's bad business for you for criminals, El Fago. Now, if I were you, I'd... Now, you stay out of trouble. We have the Addison briefs to finish. That case goes to court tomorrow. Horsemen are coming. Quick, inside. The hole in the floor. Don't make a sound. Arno, what do you want? The Cattleman's Bank was robbed of better than $15,000 this morning. So, I was not in Santa Fe this morning. You were identified as one of the robbers, Bernal. I was in the Arroyo Grande with my sheep. Can you prove it? I was alone. Only me and Savino, my dog. A dog's word against the citizens. I'm afraid that's not good enough, Bernal. You'll have to go back to town with us. I do not know you or these other men. I'm Joe Monroe, Deputy Sheriff. My orders are to bring you in for questioning. I don't believe in shooting before I've asked questions. For your own sake, Bernal, I'm asking you not to call for a show of guns. I don't do nothing bad, and I will not go with you. I would not do that, senor. And I still don't go in with you, me entiendes? Give me the rifle. I did not rob the bank, El Fego, I swear it. There you are. The innocent man has nothing to fear. Give me the rifle. I know these bosses. Men have died going to jail. You know that. These men are representing the law. The rifle, Fernando. Take a look around, boys. Thanks, mister. You saved somebody's life. We met this morning, but I didn't catch the name. I'm Joe Monroe, deputy sheriff. El Fago Baca, attorney at law. Where are the girls? In the jacal. What is to become of them? What would have become of them if you started shooting? Hey, Joe. Well, well. That Circle A buckskin Red Daniels reported stolen. He even got a Circle A saddle on him. What do you make of this, Joe? What do you say now, Bernal? 
Somebody stole my pinto this morning and left this one. That's all I know. I told you I was with my sheep. Silencio. It's best to say nothing more. Come on. Papa! ¿Qué pasa, papa? No, 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 no tears, muchachas. I will come back soon, ¿me entiendes? Lolita, you are in command now, till I come back. And you will do as your sister says, eh, niña? Sí, papá. But you will not be too hard on her. No, papá. Come on. Fernando! I'll look after them. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye, Papa. <laughs> Papa's not guilty of the stolen horse, Alfago. He wasn't here when the thief came. But you were. Yes. You saw the thief. Yes, I did. You too, Lolita. No, Senor Elfigo. I was with Senora Sandoz and her new baby. What did this man look like? Well, he was wearing a bandana. Only his eyes showed. Ah, too bad. But he spoke. I'd know his voice. What did he say? But he laughed and said I was to give El Tuerto his best regards. And then he saddled Papa's Pinto and rode away. Was he big, fat, thin, little? Well, he was about so. And he wore a black hat. With a silver band. A black hat with a silver band. But what I have just told you, will it help Papa? Well, it might. If we could find the man you saw. Oh, but he would be far away by now. The Pinto is very fast. <laughs> you stay inside tonight. And you bolt the door. I'll try to come back tomorrow and find a place for you. Lolita, you know how to use this? Si, senor. Papa taught her to shoot rabbits, not robbers. But I'll try to be brave. <laughs> Besame. Adios, senor. Goodbye, Alfago. Adios. Sorry. Startled me. Perhaps I should have knocked. Fast man, huh, Barker? Lawyer and went to fat. I bet you couldn't hold a candle against him. If you come here about Bernal, you can save your breath. I have all the answers. Anytime I want any information, I play checkers with Sam. He gets so absorbed, he answers questions just like a man in a hypnotic trance. <laughs> it's your move. <laughs> Sorry if I was short with you, Counselor. I didn't realize you were the Baca with the nine lives. That's a reputation I just as soon forget. Do they let you? The gunslingers, I mean. Oh, it's simple. If you don't wear a gun, you're not a gunslinger. Yeah, well, I guess sooner or later every man loses his touch or his nerve. Sooner or later a man learns that a gun never ends a problem. Only a life. Maybe. The conscience ever bother you, counselor? <laughs> In many ways, it depends on how you mean. Well, as a lawyer, you know, defending robbers and murderers like Bernal, seems to me defending him's a lot worse than killing him. I don't take clients. I know are guilty. Ah, go on. You birds that defend Satan himself for the right kind of fee. If Satan were arrested for a crime committed by Lucifer, yes. <laughs> You're a sharp one, Counselor. If I have any lawyer, I'll look you up. Ho ho! Oh, no. Well, got to get back to the office. Come on, El Fago. Thanks for the game. Good day, gentlemen. I tell you, there's no way around Mrs. Simmons' positive identification. The other witnesses were not so positive. But Mrs. Simmons knows Bernal personally. She's the territory's case. That's my point. Without her, there's no case. The rest of the evidence is circumstantial. But what a weight of circumstance. Yes. 
Right now, I'm more worried about Bernard's children. Well, find someone to take care of them until after this whole mess is over. What is so difficult? They're the children of a former convict. That's what's difficult. Oh, let's not confuse the issue. Finding a home for the children and defending their accused father are two different things. When you lump them together, you're guilty of thinking with your heart instead of your head. Which, of course, you never do. Of course not. Your feelings are in no way involved in this case. No, why should they be? The public thinks Bernal is guilty. The lawyer who defends him won't be popular. Now, when have I allowed public sentiment to sway me? Well, never before. But now, you're considered the governor's most likely choice for our next district attorney. I resent that. Is the impending honor making you cautious? Oh, all right, all right. If you think Bernal is innocent, you go ahead and defend him. But in the meantime, we have other work to do. How about this Anderson brief? Well, these... I'll have it on your desk in the morning. And then I'm going out to see Bernal's children. <laughs> Even smell like sheep. Hey, what's the matter? Nobody want to give Red a little back talk, hmm? A little back talk? Nobody want to give Red a little back talk? Have a little fight with Red? Sheep. Aha! Somebody forgot to dot the I. Oh, come on, Red! Nerf's a nerf! Ah, you just heard me something better to shoot at. That too, Clippy? For Pete's sakes, Red! Let's see if I can hit your hat, Cliffy. Hold it up. No! With your head in it. <laughs> oh, with your head in it. Ah, oh, come on, Cliff. Be a sport. Now cut that out! Hey, where is everybody, anyhow? Does anybody like me anymore? Does anybody like me already, boy? Hmm? Where y'all at, anyway? Who are you? El Pegobaca. You don't look like that name to be. Come for and be recognized. That's close enough. <laughs> that was something, the way you ran those people out of the saloon. Gave me a laugh. Gave you a laugh, huh? Well, don't you laugh at me, Baca, because I'm mad, see? I'm a walking, living six gun, I'm spitting bullets. Let's go in and have a drink. Wait a minute. El Fago Baca. Yeah, I know you. You killed a pal of mine in Frio Town. Now it seems like a good time to even things up. Go for your gun. I'm an armed. I'm an armed. I'm an armed. I'm an armed. Well, El Fago Baca always has a gun hidden somewhere. And I'm going to give you a chance to haul it out. In fact, tonight I feel lucky. I'm going to give you a head start. Fire one readily, Gridley. You didn't have to do that. I have my own way of handling drunks, Counselor. He'll feel sorry in the morning. You wish to prefer charges for assault? I have no quarrel against him. Suit yourself. I gotta hand it to you, Mr. Baca. That took nerve. <laughs> Who was he? Red Daniels. Nice fella. When he's sober. Is he a cowboy? Yeah, Wrangler, Circle A. Well, it's branding time. What's he doing in town? Oh, I understand he came in last night to report a stolen horse. One that turned up in Bernal's corral this morning. Guess he's just celebrating getting it back. <laughs> well, good night, gentlemen.
Chiquita, be reasonable. No, I won't go with you. What's the trouble? No trouble, Counselor. We just want to do a good turn, that's all. My wife and I just wanted to take the children into our home. <laughs> uh, all very legal, of course. Oh. I've already made plans for the girls. You have a home for them? The firm of Newman and Baca will be responsible for their safety. But thank you for your concern. Well, Mr. Simmons, looks like you spared the trouble. Well, I don't know. My wife isn't going to like this. She feels pretty badly about having to testify against their daddy, and she thought taking them into our home would sort of make it up to them. What do you like, Chiquita? With you, Alfago, not with strangers. Let's go. Well, if you change your mind, you've always got a home at our place. Bye. <laughs> Where is Lolita? With Savino and the Arroyo watching the sheep. Well, I'll go get her. You hitch up the cart and start to pack. Where will we live, Alfego? Don't you like surprises? I like them better if I know what they are. Oh. Well, first we'll go visit your papa. And then we'll see about the surprise. Oh, Lolita, Miss Nina. I'm so oh. happy to have you seen me. Oh, Papa, Jesus. El Fego, finally. Did you find out anything yet? In a moment, Fernando. Momento. Bueno. Ay, Chihuahua, the sheep. Who's taking care of them? Senor San Luis, there's no reason it isn't in the room. Hey, Ray. Ah, uh, yeah. You remember me? Huh? Yeah, sort of. You challenged me to a gunfight. Me? What'd you say your name was? El Fego Baca. Oh, now tell me this. Oh, no. no. You can go last night. Doing fine, Baba, just fine. Chiquita. I'm sorry about that, Mr. Baca. It won't happen again, I promise you. Of course not. That's why I'm not going to press charges. Thank you, Mr. Baca. Thank you. I sure do appreciate it. What did you have for supper? Oh. Chiquita, Lolita, wait outside for me, please. Good day, Chiquita. Do you know that one? Red Daniels, si. He is remodeled from the Circle A Ranch. How well do you know him? But very little, El Fego. Why? With me, of all people, you must be honest. I am, El Fego. I am. What has that one got to do with me? If he too were suspected of robbing the bank, you would know each other very well, no? Caramba! I told you I am innocent. I swear by the soul of my sainted wife and the Holy Mother. I'm sorry, Fernando. It's the business of a lawyer to doubt. I suppose so. But if there is doubt, there is also hope, yes? There is always hope. Gracias. Adios. But Lolita, I'm sure. How can you be sure? I saw him. The man you were talking to, Alfago, he's the one. Shh. Get in the wagon. Now, who is what one? The Vaquero you were just talking to. He's the one who took Papa's Pinto and left the other horse. Are you certain? I could not be more certain. Good. When I saw him last night, I remembered your description. That's why I brought you here. Then you mean that he's the robber? He could be. I'll tell the judge and he'll let Papa go. It's not as easy as that, Chiquita. But everyone should know that Papa is good and this one is bad. Everyone will know that in time. 
But until then, not a word. If you say we are to say nothing, then nothing is what we will say. And now we'll go see about the surprise. Are Budo! Howdy, Mr. Newman. Oh, hello, Cliff. I got your message in court. What's the trouble? Have you met Bernal's children? Children? Why, I thought they'd be... Whatever made me think they were boys? Chiquita, Lolita, my senior partner, Senor Newman. Buenos Buenos dia, dia, senor. Senor. Delighted. Why, they're utterly charming. You won't have any trouble finding a home for them. I'm glad you feel that way, because it's now more important than ever. Chiquita just identified Red Daniels as the horse thief. Did you tell the sheriff? First things first, a safe place for them to stay, remember? Well, how about the Palace Hotel? It's right across the street. Too many whiskey salesmen, drummers. Yeah, not the right atmosphere. How about the boarding house? Nothing but gamblers, bartenders. How about your house? Well, yes, I think that'll be... What? Not a chance. You have a spare room? Yes, but my house is strictly bachelor. But you would not be troubled personally. You have your man, Agustin. He's a fine cook. And very temperamental. If I so much as brought one female into the house, why, I'd leave. Don't worry, Senor Newman. We're good housekeepers. Oh, we'll yes, take your oh, place. Good and I'm very glad. No, no, please. Not, not another no, word. No! The choir! Now, you see what I mean? They're starting already. They're women. They're destroying. They're devouring. They're taking over man and all his works. No, sir, I'll have nothing to do with it. Find some place else to send them. You are on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry, senor. Oh. I'm sorry, senor Newman. Oh, for goodness sake, stop saying you're sorry. Can't you just sit quietly? Si, senor. We're sorry. No, mommy. Let me take those. I suggest that you and your sister retire. We've all had a very trying day. <laughs> si, senor. <laughs> Augustine, this has been a stronghold of masculine independence for many years. Si, senor. The peace and serenity of bachelorhood has to be maintained at all costs. Si, senor. I'll get it. That'll be El Fago. Ah, El Fago. Buenas noches, J. Henry. Where are they? Shh. I sent them to bed. So soon? Purely a defensive tactic. They were killing me with kindness. Say. Any progress on the Bernal case? It goes before the grand jury tomorrow. With a recommendation for indictment, naturally. Mm -hmm. They'll probably return a true bill based on Mrs. Simmons' testimony. Don't expect any miracles. No! I've had that done for me a thousand times by the girls. This time I do it myself. <laughs> well, I don't expect any miracles. But I've been thinking. That's good. I've been thinking like a sheriff. That is bad. If we could persuade Red Daniels to talk, maybe we could learn the identity of the other robbers. 
Alfago, sometimes you have a very disconcerting way of getting to the heart of things. As a lawyer, you should be more devious and complicated. That's what people expect. <laughs> okay, pass. There was a man at the window. I was about to pull the shade down, senor, when I saw him. Saw whom? Oh. oh. Strange, senor, he was looking in at us. Now, you see, El Fago, you let a woman into the house and right away there's tension and hysteria. Stair creaks and it's a mouse. An owl hoots and it... <laughs> I think so. Gracias a Dios, senor. You're safe. I think we'd better take a walk, J. Henry. Yes, take this and watch over the girls. Si, senor. Shall I get your hat? No, Agustin. This is all the hat we'll need. Come on, J. Henry. Draw on Eddie, if you please. Hey. Who's a stuffed shirt? Not so loud. Come on. Shh. That's Mr. Pierce. Don't shush me. Who's Mr. Pierce? He owns a dry goods store down the street. I ain't gonna drink with no stuffed dry goods shirt. I'm going over the corner by myself. Where there's a better class of people. I'm warning you, cowboy. Keep on warning. Any more nonsense out of you and I'll call the law. Come on. See, Red is at it again. Getting drunker by the minute. If I was Eddie, I'd stop threatening him and call the law. He seems quiet enough now. Maybe. But before he starts shooting the place up, I'm gonna call the sheriff. You're gonna be a witness for the territory. Gotta keep your wits about you. Evening, Mr. Barker. Here to join us. I'd like to speak to Red alone, if you don't mind. Not at all. I was just giving him some friendly advice. Deputy Monroe... Come on, get out of here. Sure, Red. Aren't you going to thank me for returning it? Thank you. Mr. Bakai. I'm drunk, Mr. Bakai. I, I don't know where I've been or what I've done or what for. I I'm good for nothing, no good. Mr. Baca, I didn't mean to. Red, I thought I told you to stay out of bars. You know, you always get into trouble when you drink too much. You wouldn't be trying to confuse one of the territory's witnesses, would you, Counselor? It could be that I am. I'm not so sure you're legal. There's nothing in the law that says I can't question a witness before trial. Maybe. But I'll still inform the court that this man's coming in slightly soiled. That's your privilege. Come on, Red. Let's take a nice walk to the jailhouse where you can sober up in private.
sorry about this, gentlemen. I asked him to remove his gun belt. I cautioned him not to make any sudden movements. That's right. Heard Red say he wasn't going back to jail, he pulled his gun. You can ask Mr. Newman, he was standing right there in the entrance. That's right. The cowboy drew first. Get Sheriff Wharton, please. Nobody will touch him. Everything will stay exactly as it is until the sheriff gets here. Well, what now? Would you care to go up to the office and talk it over? Huh? Sort of blows up your case, doesn't it? It doesn't help. Well, you're not really committed. You haven't officially taken Bernal's defense. The man is innocent. What do you want me to do, give up? No, no. You can't go into court without a case. And you can't even disprove the circumstantial evidence. Could you arrange to play checkers with the sheriff tomorrow? <laughs> I've already obtained all the information that way that I can get. This wouldn't be to get information. This time you would give it. Just what are you thinking about? Mrs. Simmons? Hola, Fernando. It's good to see you again, El Fiego. I've come to tell you I'm going to defend your case. Gracias, amigo. Then you think I'm innocent, eh? Si. I brought you some of Senor Newman's cigars. Ay, que bueno. Gracias. No, gracias. Maybe you can help me prove your innocence. I would do what I can. Why not? First, Chiquita identified Red Daniels as the man who stole your horse. You mean when she saw him in that cell the other day, huh? And tonight he and another man tried to abduct your children from Senor Newman's house. Mis muchachas! They are all right. Don't worry, Fernando. Chiquita screamed. They ran away. You are sure? Fernando, they are all right. But what did you do about that Red Daniels? He lost his hat in the chase. Then I found him at the saloon. He was drunk. Before I could get him to talk, the deputy arrested him. But he's not here in this jail. He's dead. Dead? How? He drew his gun. The deputy had to kill him. Ay, Chihuahua. But it's bad for me, eh? Si. But I think I know who the other man was, too. If I am right, we can still win your case. Pero que demonio! What if you are not right? Quien sabe? Quien sabe? One more thing, Fernando. Did you ever know Mrs. Simmons? No. I never saw her, and I don't think she ever saw me either. Well, I think I will have a talk with this woman. Guard! Hasta la vista, Fernando. Nos veremos, eh? I think you two should be the first to know that the firm of Newman and Baca was going to defend Bernal. <laughs> you have my sympathies. Oh, let's not be premature. We might have some surprises for you. The whole case is built around Mrs. Simmons. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if things hadn't changed a bit. So whatever gave you that idea, Mr. Newman? Well, Mr. Baca just interviewed her. And she's not quite as sure of her identification as she was. Are we going to stand for this, Mr. Wharton? Huh? 
I found Baca intimidating Red Daniels. He probably put him up to drawing on me. Now he's pushing around the territory's key witness. That's an insult! Glad to oblige. You shysters had stooped to murder to get that robber off. And you'd stoop to murder to hang him, and I know why. Do you, Mr. Newman? Do you know why? Would you mind telling an old friend what that was about? Not at all. I think it's about time you do. Now, what's this with you two? What are you talking about? What did you tell Baca? Nothing. Well, then she did. She didn't tell him anything. She didn't have to. The guilt's written all over her. Well, what did you expect killing Red like you did? That's what told those lawyers, not us. When I shot that drunken wrangler, I had self-defense proven by Baca's own partner. What I want to know is how they got onto you. Maybe because I offered to take care of the Bernal kids. How do we know? Yeah. Are you and Red snooping around Newman's house last night? Now, there was a brilliant move. It's God's retribution, that's what it is, for trying to place the blame on an innocent man. That was all your idea, Joe Monroe, all yours. I wish to heaven we'd never set eyes on you. So that's the way the wind blows, huh? Then you better get that team of yours ready. We can't just up and leave town, Joe. You're not invited, then. I'm the only one leaving town. Just me and the money. You're staying right here. Oh, no, no, don't kill him. He's not like Red. Oh, Joe, please, I promise I won't, I swear I won't say anything, please. Just sit quiet and eat your supper, Liz. I'll make sure Ben stays alive so that you two devoted folks can go to prison together. Well, you'll have to kill me first, Joe Monroe, because if we go to prison, you go too. I'll make sure of that if it's the last decent thing I'll ever... Oh, no. No, please, please, please! Ah! 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 What'd you do to her, Joe? Out of the way, Ben. What did you do to her? Out of the way! Isn't that Monroe?
Rita. Oh. oh, papá. Hola. Hace mucho tiempo que no le veo. Adiós, mi bravo. You do not kiss me anymore. Am I growing ugly? You're growing up and much too pretty. Would you have people make a scandal about it? Oh, I would love that. <laughs> Believe me, senores. I am so very grateful to you. I do not have very much money, but what little I have, forget it. As usual, my partner forgot to set the fee in advance, so you don't owe us anything. Then I will pray for you, senores, for I am very rich in prayers. Que le vaya bien, señor. El fego mío. Bernal. Vaya con Dios, eh. Sabino. Eh. Ven. Ah, que bueno a verte. Chiquita, toma. Eh. Ándale, Palomena. Adiosito. You better watch those fees, Alfago. If I ever leave the firm for the district attorney's office, you're just liable to starve to death. <laughs> mm. <laughs> a baffling mystery to thrill you. I didn't shoot him, you know. There's conflict. As an old friend, I intended to let you down easy. Please, don't bother. All right, I won't. And wait till I get you into court. I'll tear you limb from legal limb. There's a world of action awaiting you. Don't shoot, Steve. I want him alive. There's everything in great entertainment in store for you when Walt Disney presents the fabulous El Fago Baca in The Griswold Murder, just two weeks from now. And here is your host, Walt Disney, to tell you about next week's program. Next week, our show comes to you from Fantasyland. Donald Duck causes quite a disturbance in the studio when he decides to fly the coop. He goes off on one of his temperamental sprees, but finds that everything doesn't go according to plan. Now, here's some scenes from that misadventure. Next week, Donald Duck turns his back on the tinsel and glamour of Hollywood and heads into the wide open spaces to get away from it all. Free of the demands of stardom, Donald tries to return to the water world that was his natural habitat. But Chip and Dale have other ideas. Join Donald's rollicking trip to one of our great national parks where he seeks the peace and serenity of the great outdoors. Instead, he meets Humphrey, the bear with the built-in anxiety complex. But Donald's troubles really begin when he signs on as a ranger and tries to do the housekeeping chores in nature's wonderland. Settling the bears for their long winter sleep is not as simple as Donald thought it would be. Especially when Humphrey decides to move in on him. <gasps> to make matters worse, there's Chip and Dale to be dealt with too. Don't miss the hilarious climax to Donald's running battle with nature on the rampage. Next week, when Walt Disney presents Duck Flies Coop.
there's big excitement for you in Walt Disney's new motion picture, Sleeping Beauty. There's the thrilling excitement of new adventure. There's the enchanting excitement of new fun. And there's the fabulous excitement of new wonders in Technorama 70 and in full stereophonic sound. Only one specially equipped theater in your area will show Walt Disney's Sleeping Beauty. And it's worth going miles to see. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.